Hello and welcome to the special edition of I-24 News Culture Magazine. I'm standing here at the entrance to the Suzanne Dalal Center in Tel Aviv's charming Nevetze de Quarter. Dedicated to the art of contemporary dance, Suzanne Dalal Center is one of the most visited sites in Tel Aviv, drawing nearly half a million visitors each year. The Suzanne Dalal Center is home to the Batsheva Dance Company under the artistic direction of Ohad Naharin. The center is celebrating 25 years this year, which is why we're dedicating today's show to this wonderful place. We'll be interviewing choreographers Inbal Pinto and Nadav Chelner, as well as the director of the center, Yair Vardi. And of course, we'll be enjoying some wonderful performances and all from this exquisite location. The Suzanne Dalal Center was founded in 1989 by British philanthropist Jack Dalal in honor of his daughter Susie. Nowadays, it hosts an average of 750 cultural performances each year. Here's a brief historical review of the center by Elsa Mok. Very few know the story behind the name. Suzanne Dalal, who lends her name to the famous Tel Aviv Dance Center, was not a dancer herself. She was a young English girl whose life was cut short when she was barely 25 years old. She was born to a Jewish family in England. Her father, Jack Dalal, was a very wealthy real estate investor, also known as Black Jack, married to Zehava Dalal. Ellis Dalal, the British top model, descended from the family. Susan's death in 1981 was very tragic for her family, who remained very discreet about the incident. Her brother-in-law, Zeev Sokolovsky, remember her with nostalgia. Yes, I knew her very well. She was a young girl, very beautiful, very nice full of life, and unfortunately she died young. And there were options of doing a hospital, of doing a university, of doing uh, other things, and the family wanted to commemorate her in a happy way. In addition to tying the Dalal name to art, the family also helped foster the revival and the restoration of a neighborhood. Before the founding of the center in 1989, these buildings housed a girls' school and a boys' school at the end of the 19th century. Then, during the 50s, the neighborhood was abandoned in favor of more central neighborhoods. The deserted buildings fell apart. It took five years of renovation for the center to open and become what it is today, an epicenter for contemporary dance. The nice thing about it, it's developing all the time because we had a new studio, now we're thinking of building another studio, and uh, it's hard, but it's working, and it's world famous. We have more than uh, 600 performances a year, which is a lot. We perform uh, all around the world. People from all over the world come to choose Israeli dance group. The Suzanne Dalal Center has hosted the biggest international artists such as dancer and choreographer Caroline Carlson, Angeline Prilio Shai, and Magui Maureen. Within its 25 years of existence, the center has become a key landmark of worldwide contemporary dance. The Suzanne Dalal Studios host the most prestigious dancers, but they are also home to world-renowned dance companies like the Batsheva Dance Company, directed by Ohad Narin, and the Inbal Pinto and Avshalom Pola Company. Both companies are internationally acclaimed for their innovative talent and highly contemporary choreographies. From the very beginning of Suzanne Dalal, it's been home to Israel's prominent Batsheva Dance Company. Today, the modern company is internationally recognized by its artistic director, Ohad Naharin, the adventurous visionary who invented his own movement of language called Gaga. In this next piece, we explore this fascinating man and his modern dance movement. Gaga has been made famous by the performances of the Israeli dance company Batsheva. Batsheva is unanimously celebrated in the world of contemporary dance. Oad Naharin is its artistic director. With Gaga, we connect people to their pleasure and effort at the same time. Because I'm choreographing and because I work with other people, 
I was needing a language to communicate with to dancers. It's a way to get faster, softer, stronger, quicker, uh, healthier. It was a grave back injury 20 years ago that urged Ohad to develop the technique. But the choreographer had already felt the rhythm in his soul, as witnessed by Irina, who danced with him back in 1974. My name, Irina Brecher, soloist with Baceva Dance Company, apprentice dancer, Ohad Naharin. We never know. Our children are our teachers. He was in a corner, gaga around, and I didn't know what was, but I was saying, whatever this guy is having, I want some too. At the age of 62, it's thanks to Gaga that Irina keeps dancing, despite severe scoliosis. The lessons are accessible to all, young, old, professional, and amateur. People that want to dance come, you know, and my job is to connect them to the sensation, to the joy, to the passion of dance, to, to connect them to, to themselves in a way. The basic rules of Gaga are no mirror, no exercises nor repetition, but the exploration of a sensation, like for example moving your joints at the base of the fingers and toes or strengthening your abdominal energy. It is very physical. It allows me to keep a very professional approach of the movement, and we're in perpetual research. In the Gaga class, you never stop dancing. The body is always in movement. It's a lot about gaining freedom in the body and also body awareness. And mainly it's, it's something that I enjoy a lot to do. I mean, okay. I dance Gaga in the morning and evening. It's the fifth year that I dance. As you see, I'm not 18 years old. I feel that Gaga softens not only my body, but also my soul. For its creator, Gaga is much more than a simple technique of dance. It's a way of life. I think everybody should dance. Everybody should dance every day. And uh, with Gaga, I think I can give uh, people a toolbox to fulfill that wish and need. The Imbal Pinto and Avshalom Pola company was created in 1992. She was a dancer. He came from the world of theater. Together they created some beautiful pieces, mixing humor, imagination, and much more. Let's take a look at some of their pieces till now. Very happy to have them both right here with me. Imbal, Avshalom, thank you. Thank you. Let's begin with, uh, with an obvious question maybe, but still important. What defines Israeli dance? It's very hard to say as observer, to come out of the, sh the shell of the dance in Israel and to say what is defining it. And uh, I've been asked many, many times, how can we define that? Uh, it's very young um, group of people that started the um, the dance here, um, and uh, there's not a huge uh, history, a long history of uh, dance here. So everything that starts is, uh, is pioneer. Can you give uh, me an example of uh, how a personal story of yours found its way to your work? In every piece that we create, there is, yeah. it's us. Even if it looks very strange and abstract and people don't really understand, why and how, but it's about us and it's about, it's because of our, uh, as I said before, our relationship and our observation about reality and fantasy. And this mixture creates material for our productions. Um, I, I mean, I can say, I mean, th there's something that, uh, I mean, the piece that we did uh, 15 years ago and it's still running uh, called Oyster that a lot of the language, the, the vocabulary, the, the movement came from things that Inbal and I uh, was walking in the streets and did stupid things together, like holding hand and throwing them in the air, and the hand kind of comes back and touches us in a specific way. So this is one thing, I mean, but it's, it's in everything, it's in everything that we do. So your new show, Dust, tell me a little bit about it. 
It's the second time that we collaborate with two animators, uh, illustrators, two, two very talented girls, uh, Roni Fahima and uh, uh, Shimrit, Shimrit Kanati, that we did an opera production last year with them in, in, in uh, Norway. Norway. And this, this time we wanted to create something from nothing and not based on anything. And, and the process doing it with them is uh, unique for this creation. This is what uh, gives a lot of uh, the new quality of this production. Thank you, Avshalom. Thank you, Inbal. Thank Merci. you. Now, as a special treat, Michal Divon and David Gombin have prepared a special montage for us of some of the best performances from right here at Susan Dalla. We're now sitting in the center's director's office. The director of the center since its inception has been Yair Vardi, and I'm very happy that Yair is sitting right here with me. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Often you are credited with making dance popular in Israel. I'm curious if that was what you set out to do when you took this job. Well, this is the first time I hear this kind of phrase. However, it's very flattering. Well, um, my mission was to bring dance to the people. Mm -hmm. And I think I've done it and we are doing it for the moment. It took 25 years and you're just in the midst of it. Um, oh, I wanted to explore the, the most possibilities of Israeli dance in Israel and around the world. Now, uh, Batsheva has yes. been a major part of, it is of a the major center. Part of it course. is, and, yes. and hopefully... the pillars we'll... of the center, indeed. What do you think about the Batsheva company makes it stand out in such a, an obvious It's the quality way? of the dancers, it's the quality of the dances, it's the quality of the creations. There's something very uh, unique about this company. Look, it's, very, it's a bit difficult for me to talk about Batsheva. I was a member of the company when it started in 64, or was I joined it in 66, so... Of course, I'm, I feel like I'm part of the company, so for me it's the most exciting company on earth, actually. And through the years we've been working with such a varied choreographers, choreographers and choreographies we have done, so they are, I must say, they are fantastic in, in, in all means. The dancers are very strong, the creations are very interesting, they're always searching for something new, mm -hmm. to explore new, new, new thinking, new way of dancing new way of, of expressing, and this is something very unique. How about what do you plan for the future? What do you hope to see happen in Suzan Dalal in the next two, five, ten years? School. A school of dance. We don't have a school of dance. I think it's a major thing that we need to develop here. And I would love to do it with the Bacheva Dance Company and any other company that will join us. I think this is necessary now here in Suzanne Dalal. For the past 25 years, we concentrated on the artists and the creations. I think now we establish it and we are building a new studios now. So, yeah. so we'll have more space to, to do it because school needed different facilities. So I think school is the major, I mean, goal for the future of Suzanne Dalal and maintain and develop what we have, what we achieved and to spread the dance in Israel and around the world. Yair yeah, Valdi, thank you so much. Thank you. And from the director's office to the studio, I'm here with Nadav Tselner, a young up-and-coming dancer and choreographer. Nadav, uh, tell me a little bit, how is it? What, what's the life of a young choreographer life? What do you aspire to? A lot of work, a lot of hope, a lot of uh, believe, mm -hmm. uh, and lucky. Seems like on the, you're on the right track. Um, to end today's show, we're going to have a performance by Nadav. What are you going to perform for us? Uh, it's pork. It's short, short duet and very fun and very easy. All right, with? With Moran Miller, my amazing dancer. I like, I like her so much. Great. Uh, so let's uh, check it out. Pork, Nadav Tselna. <laughs> 
Thanks. That concludes today's special edition of our Culture Magazine. I hope you enjoyed watching our show. We'll be here again tomorrow with a whole new show for you. Bye-bye.